After weeks of moving from one place to the next, me and the rest of the gang finally thought we found the perfect place to call home. It was a large room in the top part of one of those big box-like things that humans live in that was located in the older section of town. It had everything a mouse could possibly need. There was lots of nesting material to work with, and a large supply of cereal and food scraps to munch on. On our first night there, I was the one everybody voted to go down and look for food, since I have exceptionally large cheeks that can hold a lot of stuff. They're so big that they can stretch to hold up to 20 corn pops at a time. That's why everybody calls me Chipmunk Mouse, or Chippy for short. So anyway, I scurried down to the room where the food was, and much to my delight, there was a wide variety of cereal in a partially opened cupboard near the floor. After much deliberation, I decided to go for the Cheerios since we hadn't had those for a while, and thought it would be nice to switch things up a bit. After stuffing my mouth to maximum capacity, I made the trek back up to our nesting site and shared my bounty with the others. After our feast, we ended up telling stories of our past encounters with humans and other animals. When morning came, we all gathered in the nest we made to get some shut-eye. On the second night in our new home, it was my turn to scavenge for food. After Chippy described the layout of the lower part of the building, I was off. I soon found the room where Chippy found the Cheerios, but when I went to the cupboard where he said the cereal was, I noticed that it was empty and clean as a whistle. The humans must have noticed what Chippy had done, and in an effort to protect their cereal supply, they must have moved it to higher ground. I was further convinced that the humans were on to us, and I saw many of those wooden and metal contraptions that lure a mouse to them with a treat, only to snap their necks right when they're about to collect their prize. When I first noticed them, I was briefly reminded of some of my closest friends who had met their death by falling for the deception of these horrible snares. I, however, am not the kind of mouse to be frightened by them. As my dear Uncle Gus showed me how to dismantle them and keep the cheese without getting hurt, that is what I proceeded to do that night as well. With all of the cheese I collected contained in the food wrapper I found, I slowly headed back to the nest where the others were waiting. I told them about the wooden metal contraptions and warned them to be cautious in the future, since the humans might employ other devices that are set on getting rid of us. At that point, our new home suddenly didn't feel as safe as it did at first. Me and my sister do everything together, and looking for food is no exception. Even though the others warned us that it would be riskier if we both went, we decided to go down together anyway. We said that the dynamic duo of Snuffles and Bounce could not be separated. Taking heed of Bert's warning about the neck snappers, as I like to call them, me and Bounce scurried down to find dinner. When we reached the place where the food was kept, I noticed that something wasn't quite right. With my superior sense of smell, I detected the familiar scent of mouse poison and alerted Bounce immediately. She then ceased her perpetual hopping around, the memory of our dear Grandma Doris slowly fading away after eating mouse poison, probably going through her head. After looking around, we found a few bait stations with mouse poison and then made an effort to avoid them. We couldn't find any food near the ground, I assumed that this was because the humans probably moved all of it away from the ground after Chip got into the Cheerios. However, there was something up on the counter that smelled absolutely heavenly. A partially open bag of what I heard the humans refer to as Cheetos. 
After discovering them, I told Bounce to jump up and retrieve the bag of cheese-flavored deliciousness so she can jump really high. When we brought the Cheetos back to the others, they were overjoyed and the bag was soon empty. We then told them about our encounter with the mouse poison, warning the others to avoid it at all costs. The noise that I had been dreading finally came. It was my turn to look for food since all the others had already gone and done it. I was really nervous to go down after hearing about the dangers that the others had faced. I had also considered the possibility that there might be some new menace for me to face that night. I tried to act cool about it, you know, but I don't think any of the others were buying it. Snuffles tried to encourage me by reminding me that I could escape any danger by just turning invisible. Having this trait may sound unusual for an ordinary mouse, but it's actually quite common in my family. I forget what happened exactly, but one of my ancestors must have helped out a magical being of some sort, and now we all have the ability to disappear whenever we want. Snuffle's words didn't help me feel that much better, but I knew she was just trying to help, so I kind of just nodded and made my way down. After discovering an assortment of food scraps in the compost bin, I heard the sound of large paws thumping on the smooth floor. I turned around and saw a large, white, fluffy cat! I was about to panic, but then remembered what Snuffle said, and I vanished from the cat's sight. I had trouble holding back my laughter at seeing the extremely confused look of the snowball-like feline, but knew it was in my best interest to stay quiet. After staring in disbelief for another minute, the cat finally ambled away, and I continued rummaging through the compost bin. Once satisfied by the amount of food I collected, I went back to the others and told them about my encounter with a cat, <laughs> and they all got a good chuckle out of it. I am not a huge fan of mice. <laughs> But I noticed that there had been at least one mouse present in the house that I had inherited from my grandmother and had just recently moved into. I did everything I could think of to get rid of them. Then, after reading online about the places where they like to live in houses, I decided to do a little investigating. After doing the search of the main floor and the second floor, I decided to check out the attic. It was extremely dusty and filled with furniture covered in sheets and boxes of grandma's things neatly labeled with a sharpie. It seemed to me at first that nobody had been up there in years. That wasn't entirely true. Something had been up there recently. A group of five mice to be exact. I found them curled up with their eyes closed in the back corner of the attic and a nest made up of pieces of fabric and paper and stuff. I couldn't help but notice how adorable they were. After seeing them, I didn't have the heart to kill them anymore, and suddenly regretted placing the mouse traps and the mouse poison throughout the house, and borrowing Snowball, my friend's cat. However, I also knew that I couldn't keep them in the house. After putting some gloves on, I decided to carefully pick them up and put them in a box with holes in it. I put the lid on the box and then carried them to my car. I ended up taking them to a nearby meadow where there was plenty of room for them to run around and places to burrow. After watching them for a few minutes, I said a quiet goodbye to the mice and headed back to my car, hoping that they would be happy in their new home.